In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. This morning, we will be speaking on a message titled, God's Promises Does Not Fail. God's Promises Does Not Fail. As humans, we all know, by our nature, Hardly would you be able to find a man who will not fail in one area of his life or the other. If a man should promise you today, be rest assured, don't wait till tomorrow. It could fail you today, yes. not even tomorrow. Why? Men are self-centered. But if it is God who is promising you, based on human standard, it may seem it's taking time. But we rest assured, it will not fail you. So it's important for us to know that putting our trust Putting our faith in man is an effort in fertility. We don't produce any good fruits. If we consider the last two weeks, prominent people who have passed away, and they passed away by the way every day around the world. Some people are dependent on them, some people are hoping that their lot will be improved based on the promises that have been given to them by these great men and women. But lo and behold, they passed on when anyone least expected. Yes. But we are talking about a God that you don't need to pray to sustain him. A God that never forgets a God that stands by his word, a God who is more interested in you than any other person. That's the God we are talking about. So whatever may be the promises of God to you, know that this God won't fail you. So God's promises does not fail. I want to encourage us not to take the lesson or the Bible passages we'll be reading as a familiar text. Well, there is nothing new in all of the texts we'll be reading in the scripture. But what is new is the transforming power in it. Its ability to give us to take us to where God wants us to be. That's what's new about it. And in fact, the word of God is new daily. Yes. So, take your mind off the familiarity with the text. Rather, hold on to what God wants to do in your life. May the Lord Bless us all this morning as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 12. I'll be reading from verse 1 to 5. After the death of Abraham's father, God told him, Leave your own country behind you and your own people and go to the land I will guide you to. If you do, I will cause you to become a father of a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous. And you will be a blessing. 
to many others. You can see here that Abraham was not just willing to embark on a endless journey. He was not just willing to leave the land probably because there was hardship. It was not because he felt he wants to change our environment that he had to leave. He left based on the prompting of the Lord. Several people leave where God had destined them to be. And at the end of the day, what will be the repercussion? What will be the outcome? Sorrow and tears. So if God is not asking you to leave a place, where are the places you are likely going to leave? Some people are actually tired of their immediate environment. You may be tired, but if the Spirit of God is not asking you to leave, be there. Why? There are several lions outside. You may not see it, but they are there. But if it is the, the, the Spirit of God that is leading you, asking you to leave that immediate environment, the rest are sure. Yes, there are lions. There are several serpents here and there. But you know the promise of God? None will ever hurt you. Yeah. You will be able to leave that environment. You will sell through safely. You will get your destination safely. So, before taking any decision, the rest are sure. Have the confirmation in your spirit that it is the true God that is speaking to you, not just your emotions. Because sometimes a lot of people claim that God is speaking to them, whereas they are being led by their mere feelings, mere emotions. But to say, if you do, what does that mean? If you obey the Lord, I will cause you to become a father of a great nation. <laughs> to be the father of a great nation, not just of a nation, but the nation is described as being great. Imagine God talking about greatness. Great nation. So how would, would we humans describe such a nation? Exceedingly great. If God himself is telling you he's going to make you great, before man, you will be exceedingly great. That will happen if you obey. So obedience is the key to ensuring that the promises of God is fulfilled in your life. We need two major ingredients. You must have faith in the word of God. You must have faith in the leading of the Lord. And you must be willing to obey. If you are not willing to obey but you have faith, you cannot get the blessing thereof. If you are willing to obey but you don't have faith, you can't get the blessings thereof. You must have faith this morning and you must be willing, you must be ready to be. I will bless you and make you and make your name famous. What does that word famous then mean? Everyone will know about you. When it says everyone, that means that no matter the classes of people, they will hear about you. They will recognize you. The kings around will know about you. The nobles around will know about you. It will not just end there. Ordinary men on the streets. We know about you. You know that there are some great people around. 
that are only known to the high and mighty. Huh? But the people on the street don't know them. We are not talking about that. And there are some people that are known on the streets, known by everyday people. But to those at the top, they are known. So God is telling you, you will make your name famous. Everybody will sought after you. Amen. For good. Because they will need you. They will need you. They will see something special in you. They will be willing to associate with you. If you obey. If it's your company. And God is saying it's going to make. Because that's part of you. He so it's going to make you famous. You know what that's going to, what that simply means? It's going to make your company a first class company. Amen. A blue chip company. Amen. How God will do it shouldn't be your problem. You follow the leading of God. I saw something, I'm not sure now, probably yesterday, but I, don't, I did not pay much attention. But I received something like um, um, somebody that sells on the streets in probably in Cannes or thereabout that now holds, uh, I think it's Rando, 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 something like that. Uh, oil as well as um, airlines holds fleets of planes now and several filling stations. It's a multi billionaire. It's not a case of being a multi billionaire that attracts me there. The point I'm trying to make is that our God will lift you up beyond human understanding. Nobody will be able to fathom it. Someone you can easily you you know this is what he has been doing. You know, if you want to paint such people in a ridiculous way in your banana, what upon time was supposed to be Worobo. Whether Worobo or was supposed to be who we'll stop God from taking you to where He wants you to be? Yes. Will you be ready to be? Say, He's going to make you famous. And you will be a blessing to many others. Amen. So, when God is promising you and these promises are coming to pass, it's not just for you. It can't just be for you alone. Yes. You are the first beneficiary. You won't be the only beneficiary. And others. Yes. Your immediate environment, your family, and those in distant lands. You think it's for fun that some people give others other people's children scholarship to be blessed. Yes. To be blessed. All expenses of some people traveling, um, expenses and all of that. Some people take all those bodies upon themselves. Just to ensure that some other people find their footings in life. Yes. They are blessings to others. God is saying that it's going to make you one of such people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. These are the promises of God. You only need to know this. You need to believe this. Not until you go down on your knees to pray before this will materialize in your life. No. No. Once you believe in this living God and you hold tight to him, this promise is an everlasting one for all those who love the Lord. All those who serve the Lord in reference 
All those who acknowledge the lordship of God. All those who do not bow to any man and to any idol. It's telling you clearly. For those who bless you, they are blessed already. Their blessings will continue to multiply. There are some people who are so intelligent that they realize this. That whenever they do something for you, it's like, it's like they have multiple blessings. You know what those people will do? They will stop blessing you. But for those who are foolish, a majority are foolish. People whose heart is filled with evil, they are foolish. Yes. You can't do anything about that. What God is saying is that for those who decide on their own to curse you, you don't need to go down to pray. They are cursed already. They are cursed already. Because you are, you are the beloved of the Lord. You are the favorite of the Lord. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord has instructed him, not following his own plans. As the Lord has instructed him. How many of us truly follow the instructions of God in our family? How many of us? In our businesses, how many of us? It's so easy. You don't think twice before you cheat others. Don't think twice. Right? And you say it's normal. What's normal about you cheating others? What's normal about you being greedy? What's normal about you causing others pain? What could be normal about that? What could be normal about destroying other people's property? What's normal about destroying our collective common wealth? If not that you are evil. Consider the magnitude of the things destroyed because some people are protesting. We cannot see that. We can all see that. We are all protesting. We all. If we sit at home, it's a form of protest. Huh? If you stand on the road and you are not talking, in fact, you seal your lips and you are all there, you are all protesting. Must we loot other people's goods? Was it cause other people pain? No. Must we take weapon and kill other people's children and parents? So you need to follow the instruction of God. And Lord went to Abraham was 75 years old. At that time, he took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, and all his wealth, the cattle, the cattle, the slaves he had gotten in Aram, and finally arrived in Canaan. When you are going on a journey like this, it's not one that you can go alone. You need all of the support. Yes, you are the leader, but you need all of the support. Let the land according to the instruction of God took his wife along. 
all of the blessings he had earlier on took it along. His relatives took them along. Why? God had told him, I will make you a great nation. That's a way it gives you on that bushy abbey. But this is going to, there are reasons why God had put all of these people around him. Everybody around you, there are reasons. Every good person around you, there's a reason why they are there. Don't, don't look at them and think you are the only useful vessel. They are all useful vessels. Now play their usefulness, you will see how far you will go in life. Genesis chapter 15. From verse 1. After all, Jehovah spoke to Abraham in a vision. And this is what he told him. Don't be fearful, Abraham, for I will defend you. Amen. I thought you would say amen to that. Amen. Everywhere you see that, Abraham, you put your name because you're the one that God is speaking to. Yes. Just imagine, God is telling you in clear words that He will defend you. Amen. What will you be afraid of? So don't be afraid. That means that truly you may see things that may cause you to fear. That will make you shiver. That will threaten your existence. It says don't be afraid. Why? It may be no true. Church of tomorrow, of today and tomorrow. God! So it's the one that's telling you not to be afraid. Genesis chapter 15, still verse 1. For I will defend you and I will give you great blessings. That will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. But Abraham replied, O oh Lord Jehovah, what good are all your blessings when I have no son? For without a son, some other members of my household will inherit all my wealth. Every man will be concerned about this. There are several people who pretend they are not concerned. Look at them well. Please, take time and look at them well. Majority of such people are evil people. If you are not, you will be concerned. All of your toil, all of your labor, who will it go to? What will become of it? Who will be the manager tomorrow? Allah on the shy and you do do do. A person who is a nobody does not care. He has nothing. Spiritually is empty. Materially is empty. <laughs> it will seek solace in the fact that you want to leave the world exactly the way you get it? 
you should be willing to improve on what you met on ground, not to tear it apart. Definitely you won't take anything behind. I mean, you won't take anything along with you. But what about the other people behind? Shouldn't there be adequate provisions for them to help them stand A good father will think about that. For those who are looking for children, either male or female, the power of the living God will grant you your heart desires in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you gather everything, I don't know how it will be administered tomorrow. It's worthless. It's worthless. But you know what the scriptures told us? The scripture told us that a good father will leave inheritance for his children and his children's children. A good father. That's what God wants you to be. Either as a mother or as a father. A good mother, a good father. And for the children, what is the inheritance here now? We all know exactly what we are going through as a nation. So when you have a parent who is training you, sending you to school, that's a great inheritance. Yes. A great one. That's massive investment. Yes. Be grateful. Be grateful. Then Jehovah told him, No, no one else will be your heir, for you will have a son to inherit everything you owe. Then God brought Abraham outside beneath the night time sky and told him, Look up into the heavens and count the stars if you can. But I will the water warning yet titi onto you sipe be bo bori me jacky kya home to You want to tell me you know all that God has done for you? The blessings of God you are enjoying? You don't have that capacity to itemize them one after the other. You don't. Is it out wise? As I say every time, you just go and get medical books where various diseases, illnesses are stated with their names. What we mean is young. Go and check it. And God is saving from all of those multitudes. Just medical. Your financial needs, God has meeting with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I need to perform. So I say, you step out and check. Talk the steps. Try. I know you can try, try and count them if you can. But if you can't, this is how the blessings I'm going to give you. This is just a sample of it. So it will be for you in Jesus' name. Look up into the sky. Look up into the heavens and count the stars if you can. Your descendants will be 
like that. That's a promise to somebody without a soul. <laughs> At over 75, without a soul, where will you start? And there's a promise. As I say every time, look, you can never exhaust as a person the blessings of God. Yes. It truly is the blessings of God. If the blessing is from God, you can't exhaust it. Yes. Too many to count. And Abraham believed God that God considered him righteous on account of his faith. On what account will God consider you righteous? I don't know. And I don't think you know too. You told me you know either. But you try your best. Try your best in the service of God. Serve the Lord with a open mind, a open heart. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly. You'll be surprised when the Lord will declare you righteous. When the Lord declares you righteous, you will know. Nobody needs to tell you. You will know. You will know. This promise this blessing is not just for Abraham. It's for all. You know how God described David? The apple of his eye. How about correct? Yes. How will he describe you? Is David a perfect person? No. Is Abraham a perfect person? Serve this living God, this true God, with a open heart. Obey. Be willing. Be ready to obey. It will perfect all that pertains to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 13. Then Jehovah told Abraham, Your descendants will be oppressed as slaves in a foreign land for 400 years. <laughs> From the very beginning, God was telling Abraham all that will happen to his people. That's why the blessings is also telling them about the challenges ahead. Somebody that has his own subordinates Zone slaves working for him. And God is telling him that your descendants will be slave in a foreign land. Whatever comes your way, always take it to the Lord. If it is part of God's plan for your life, you will come out stronger. You will come out better. You will come out victorious. Amen. But I will punish the nation that enslaved them. And it was no cuckoo. They tapa said no male. It was all up when you have a good idea. I'm not rude here. For so cuckoo, they want you alone. Why, all those who believe they could make life miserable for you you continue wait and see that's what God is telling Abraham here. Don't because of this that I've informed you become so sorrowful. 
Wait and see. I'm the God of vengeance. I will deal with the nations, with the nation that has chosen to oppress you and your descendants. So, will the Lord do in your lives in Jesus' name? Amen. So, if you have been oppressed in your line of business, those who are oppressing you, God will oppress them. Amen. If people believe they could drag you and they could enslave you, they can't enslave you. God will break every form of chain. It will set you free. And rather they will be going into slavery in Jesus' name. And the end and at the end, they will become, they will come away with great wealth. Let me take that again. But I will punish the nation that enslaved them. And at the end, they, who are the day, your descendants will come away with great wealth. The Lord will do so in your life in Jesus' name. So the challenges of the moment don't allow that to define your life. Don't allow that. Don't allow that. Constantly ask yourself, what is the promise of God for you? You must know within yourself that these promises of God can't fail. Saying, is saying, God is telling you, you are coming out with great wealth. What's the number one wealth? Your health. Your health. God is telling you, you will secure that. It will grant you peace of mind. You know what the scripture told us? Please, seek you First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. You know what? I will grant unto you all other things. God is telling you, he knows what you need. He knows those things that are befitting to your life, that will make your life beautiful. And it's assuring you, he will grant you those things. Your life will turn out to be beautiful in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 15. But you will die in peace Amen. at a ripe old age. Amen. After four generations, they will return here to this land for the wickedness of the Amorite nations living here now will not be ready for punishment until then. Do you know the time that God wants to punish the Amorites in your life? Do you know? You don't know. Except you are the one plotting, strategizing, Devising means to launch attack against the Amorites. But if it is God that is fighting your battle, indeed, you don't know the time. But you just rest. That's what God is telling you. At his own time, he will fight your battle. At his own time, the punishment due to the Amorites. They will receive it in full in the mighty name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. From verse 1.
When Abraham was 99 years old, God appeared to him and told him, do you see how God had been appearing to him yes. and talking to him? Yes. That I appeared to you at a ten. Doesn't mean you have forgotten about you. When you are 30, when you are 40, when you are 50. It is by human standard that they say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. But to start with, you are not a fool. You are not a fool. But the time of your elevation, it may not be in your 20s, it may not be in your 30s, it may not be in your 40s, but be rest assured, you'll be elevated. Do we really believe what we do and what we say every time? That God's time is the best. Most of us don't believe it. We don't. If we truly believe that God's time is the best, we will hold on tightly to these promises of God. We will be more relaxed. But who is to be blamed? Nobody. You know the reason? We are but. We are but. Humans. But whether you are humans or not, hold firmly to the promises of God. God appeared to him and told him, I am the Almighty. Obey me and live as you should. I will prepare a contract between us. <laughs> you are not the one preparing the contract. God. Do you know the contract between you and God this morning? Do you? Do you? You can't tell me no. It's all here in the book of life. Yes. Yes. All you just need to do is to obey. Oh Lord, it was a way. Shag Baron. Shag Baron. A yinni fair. A ito ba we form. Oh, man, the key of shape. Job, shag, borrow. Shag, borrow. The contracts are all here, settled. But we violate the contracts. Say, so should not covet. But you are willing to covet. Don't envy, you are willing to envy. Don't lie, you are willing. It's like you cannot survive without lying. Don't kill. Your mouth is what's done. The AK-47. Yes. Your mouth yes. is worse than that. When you do not love and respect and care about your parents, can you love God? It's all settled. So you have the contracts. You can't pretend you don't know about it. I'll prepare a contract between us. Guaranteeing to make you into a mighty nation. In fact, you shall be the father of not only one nation, but a multitude of nations. Yeah. How can this be possible? Mm. Can you fathom that out in your mind, in your head? Can you? I can't. At 99, without the promised child. And God is telling you, I'm not just making the father of a nation.
nation. Many nations. Many mighty nations. Ow! That ow, only God has the answer. If we go back to that verse 1, the concluding part of verse 1 told Abraham that all you need to do is to what? Obey. That's all. That's all. But in, but a multitude of nations, Abraham fell face downward to the dust as God talked with him. What more? God told him, I'm changing your name. It's no longer Abraham, which means exalted father. Is this name not good enough? Exalted father. Exalted father. That was what his father gave him. Amongst his siblings. But the exalted father had no child. Is that itself not a reproach? Look. <laughs> Whatever greatness God has deposited in your life, whether the devil likes it or not, it will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Just such a wonderful name. Exalted Father. But there's something more than the exalted Father. There's something. There's always a better deal with God. A better contract with God. You may think you've seen it all. You may think you have it all. There is still a better. A better something. A better wealth. A better anything you want. A better child. Anything. Just, look, just add that better to it. That better is with the almighty. And you know the reason why this is so sweet? God is willing to release that better to you. Amen. He will release it to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. The ones he has released to you will continue to multiply in Jesus' name. Amen. But Abraham, okay, it's no longer Abraham, exalted father, but Abraham, Father of nations. Father of nations. You know that there are some nations that they have their leader, a leader, and they consider him a national leader. The person may be gone, but they continue to celebrate that person every year, every year, that this is their leader. This is the father of the nation. It's just a father. It's an exalted father. But father of nations. When you say because not job as you, I like the people the more. Amen. They don't know first so what? Amen. As so what? In the mighty name of Jesus. For that is what you will be. I have declared it. Verse 6. I will give you millions of descendants who will form many nations. 
nations. Kings shall be amongst your descendants. And I will continue this agreement between us generation after generation forever. For it shall be between me and your children as well. It is a contract that I shall be your God and the God of your posterity. And I will give all this land of Canaan to you and them forever. And I will be your God. Amen. Verse 9 and 10. Your part of the contract, God told him, is to obey its terms. You personally and all your posterity have this continual responsibility that every male among you shall be circumcised. What's our responsibility today? The Father loved the, the Lord. Is there a pot in the family? Is there a pot for the children? But the children will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The Father loved the, the Lord and the children as well. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The Father, the mother served the Lord and the children serve the Lord as well. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So leave no one out. Let our children love the Lord. Amen. Let them be exposed to the things of God. Amen. I cannot be coming to service. The children are home. And for the children, the father, the mother, that is trying to see to it that you recognize the Lord on time, that father and mother will not be there forever. Yes. It's in your interest to key in. When you key in, you are not keying in for them, you are keying in, in, into the blessings of God for your own good. For your own good. For your own good. How pleasant it would be. You just imagine. Imagine. Let's use the things of this world for a better understanding. Imagine that you can physically see the blessings of God this morning. Let's equate the blessings of God to what our heart desire the most for. Not everybody do money. And there is $50,000 $50, allotted to me, allotted to her, allotted to him. And you check yours, and it's $5,000. Something has been deposited for you. Have you? Something has been given to you. Yes. Will you be very, very happy? No. When you don't key in into the service of God yourself, to so notice God yourself, the five thousand dollars you have are the crumbs that comes from your parents to you because they love the Lord. Yes. But you do yourself a lot of good. To have your own fifty thousand dollars, you do yourself a lot of good. So much of a toronto when any kelly, who pay who pay you to hear that it tell me bubu. What it tell me kika? Ruan pi bubu aga.
verse 11. The first king of the Spanish shall be cut off. This will be the proof that you will, that you and they accept this covenant. Every male shall be circumcised on the eighth day after birth. This applies to every free foreign born slaves as well as everyone born in your household. So the blessings, is it just for the immediate children? No. Everybody, the entire household. Yes. Stay with him. What God, the confines of where God wants you to be. Remain there. Don't pull down the fence. This is a permanent part of this contract. And it applies to all your posterity. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will thus be marked as participants in my everlasting covenant. Anyone who refuses these terms shall be cut off from his people. For he has violated my contract. The God added. Regarding Sarah, your wife, and name is no longer Sarah, but Sarah, meaning princess. Meaning princess. And I will. Many princes, I'm a balloon baba. Balloon baba. Hello, I should go on a baba. I will bless her and give her a son and give you a son from her. At what age? <laughs> yes, I will bless her richly. At what age? And make her the mother of nations. At what age? Only that day we call her to say. Remember the contract from generation to generation. But there's somebody that God promised. Ori of Fenya no mama so. Lori and Toku. Be the promised person. Be the promised child. Be the center of the blessing. Be the beloved of God. Many kings, many kings shall be amongst your posterity. Then Abraham threw himself down and worshiped before the Lord. But inside, he was laughing. See that it wasn't only 
Sarah that laughed the other time. In this case, Abraham was also laughing. <laughs> The same way some of us may also believe. We are being. Well, God will not count it. He may not count it as sin. He knows you are just humans. But you know what? Just don't doubt God. All we are told here is that he laughed. You see everything that this is impossible. But he trusted the Lord. The same way we also know that there are several things that seem impossible in our lives. It only seems impossible. The scripture told us that, but with God, all things are possible. Only with God. Yes. Not with any man. And that's the reason why your life, take it to God, surrender it to God, not any man. He laughed. But inside, he was laughing in disbelief. Me, be a father, he said, in amusement, me, 100 years old, and Sarah, to have a baby at 90? And Abraham said to God, yes, do bless Ishmael. So told you really, people go see. You let them know people go see. But where God is taking you to, you don't know yet. If you do, is there any need to still pray? If you know the destination, is there still any need to pray? If I have money, I will do this, I will do that. If you will do this, you will do that. If you have real money, you will do beyond what you are, if, what you are protected. You are not yet there. So God can give you beyond your own estimation. Verse 19. No. God replied. That isn't what I said. Don't twist it. The same thing with us all. Don't the word of God. The word of God is plain enough. It's simple enough. Don't twist it. Don't, don't rationalize. This is what God makes. Who are you to say that? God is talking. You are the one interpreting it. God says, A. Hey, you are saying A of God means C. Who are you to say that? If God wants to say C, is he not able to clearly tell us it is C? Yes. God is taking you to a glorious place. Amen. You will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. No, God replied, that isn't what I said. Sarah shall bear you a son. Let it be clear. And you will name in Isaac. Let it be clear. Which means laughter. 
Oluwa pa gbogbo wa lerin ayo. And I will sign my covenant with him forever. Is that not the promise to Abraham? Is that not the same promise to the child that is yet unborn? And with his descendants, as for Ishmael, apparently we should stop this reading here, but I will read it, read everything through. Verse 20. As for Ishmael, all right, I will bless him too. In your pay, turn it to my local girl, Fekono Roshi, or not, she. Tito wa lo pono ro le se ye a se ju be lo Say you should commit your ways before the Lord and he will what? He will what? He will direct your path. If it's directing your problem doesn't mean it will prosper your ways. It will prosper all that pertains to you. So Ishmael was not left out. Abraham brought him in. Is this God a wicked God? No. As for Ishmael, all right, I will bless him also. Just as you have asked me to, I will cut in to multiply and become a great nation. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference then? One is many nations. One is a nation. Nations and nations here. It's not just talking about a nation, geographical enclosement. Like we have Nigeria, geographical boundary. No. It goes beyond that. One man be four week beggar, lotu, losi, newaju, lenny. That's nations. And the talk about free beggar, newaju, he beggar not shiny. So boy, boko kongwa to chukolo. He boko to lele banye alora fifu bogoa. I feel it was she boy joko iroi boko be. Verse twenty one. But my contract is with Isaac, making it clear again. We were born, we were born to you and Sarah. Next year, at about this time, that ended the conversation, and God left. Let me just stop there, just save our time. Genesis chapter twenty-one. But speaking on the message with title, God promises. Does not fail. Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1. Then God did as he had promised, and Sarah became pregnant and gave Abraham a baby son in his own, in his own age. 